Hello, this is Music Tech Help Guy. Welcome to episode 12 of my Alchemy tutorial series. Today we are going to customize the sound design of some samples with the spectral resynthesis options in Alchemy. Uh, one thing I should note is that in order for you to have all of the parameters uh, that I'm going to have um, in this video, it's important that you make sure to update to the newest version of Logic, which is version 10.2.1. Uh, some of the spectral options uh, will look a bit different and some of them won't be available if you're using 10.2.0. So essentially what uh, spectral resynthesis does is it analyzes the frequency spectrum of a signal and artificially uh, synthesizes new sounds based on the sample's spectral characteristics. Uh, so when you import a sample with the, um, when you import a sample uh, in spectral mode, it basically takes the audible spectrum of the signal and can split it into a number of spectral bins or bands. Uh, the gaps between the bins then can be filled with either sine waves or filtered noise to recreate the signal. The thing is that when you recreate a signal, it doesn't really produce any interesting effects. Uh, basically, the resynthesized sound will be very similar or identical to the original. So um, it's how you affect the resynthesis that makes things interesting. We can uh, affect, uh, affect the resynthesized sound with some different uh, preset effects, uh, and we can also use the um, built-in spectral uh, editor in Alchemy to, to resynthesize the sound in, in some different ways. Um, Okay, so let's get started. Just like in part 11, I essentially started with a sculpture patch. Um, basically, I chose one that was called the Crystal Pad and exported the samples. If you want to see how I did that, uh, just go and watch part 11. I'm not going to do that all over again. I'm going to assume you know how to convert MIDI to audio and then export as samples. Um, so what I'm going to do is just uh, clear this patch. Um, I'm going to go to my first source, import audio. And I'm going to look for, first let me pull the volume up, uh, I'm going to go to my media drive. This is where I stored uh, these samples. It's under synths, and it's called crystal pad. So here they are. So here's just one of the samples. So again, I took these from the crystal pad preset from Sculpture. Um, Next what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure that the analysis mode is on spectral and turn off the format button because we're not using that yet. Make sure the mapping is on pitch and then hit import. Now the spectral analysis takes a bit longer than loading samples in sampler mode so I'll off screen the load time. Okay so all of the uh, samples are loaded in. I'm going to go to the edit window for just a moment and I'm going to go to the main window and you'll see all of our samples are in there. Um, if you want to take the, the time to do so, you can go and you can loop each one of these. I'm not really going to do that because um, we're not going to be using this patch for very long. Uh, but since we loaded it in the spectral mode, we can also see a, a spectral analysis of it as well. So we'll come back to the spectral editor in just a moment. For now, we're going to use the, the more simplified options out here in the spectral engine. Um, so basically, when you play in notes on your MIDI keyboard, after loading in samples in spectral mode, you'll be able to see the... Um, a real-time analysis, a spectral analysis on this spectrogram here. Um, so this is just essentially the energy in the signal from low frequencies in the bottom to high frequencies on the top. Left and right is obviously time, as you'll see the waveform just sort of plate goes left or uh, goes right to left, and then the brighter portions are going to be the louder uh, parts of of the of the analysis. So let me just play a little bit here. So you'll see a lot of energy, a lot of sort of uh, horizontal bars. Those are generally going to be uh, the more meaningful, more noticeable um, harmonics uh, in the signal. Earlier I said that the spectral bins can be filled with either sine waves or noise, which recreates the signal, um, uh, resynthesizes the signal. When you have the pitch option on, it fills those spectral bins with sine waves. So basically you end up with something that's very similar or the same as the original sample. 
In our case, it was something that's kind of musical, like a pad type instrument, and so it comes out very musical. If you click on noise, it fills the um, spectral bins with filtered noise. You end up with something that is maybe not quite as, as musical. Although if you use noise on, on certain sounds, you can use it as a special effect or a sound effect. So for today, we're going to use the, the pitch option. There's also a built-in bandpass filter where you can uh, apply a low cut or a high cut to the signal. And when you play with those two options, you'll see uh, the effect, uh, the direct effect on the, uh, the frequency analysis. All right, so one of the cool quick ways to um, um, spectrally resynthesize a sample or a set of samples like this is to use the resynthesis presets that we have here. There's actually two uh, sets of them. They're basically the same, uh, the same two sets, but you can just add two of them at once. I'm just going to add one. And for all of these... Uh, presets, they basically affect um, how the signal is resynthesized. So I'm going to try this one called uh, Frequency Shift. And for all of these uh, presets, they will all have a mix knob. The mix knob is essentially the, the blend between the dry and the wet signal. So if it's at zero, you're just going to hear the, the dry uh, resynthesized sound. As you pull it up, you'll hear the effect in there. So you can sort of blend the affected sound and the, the dry sound together. So you can see in the analysis, there's a bit of like a high frequency shift that's moving around. That's essentially what this is doing. Um, the other three knobs in each one of these um, presets are going to be different dependent upon what the preset is. So let me try this one called Glide. So this one's got a bit of like a high frequency uh, sweep in it. That's kind of cool. So I'm going to stick with that one. Um, let's make this something that's a little bit more musical, something we can play some chords with. Um, so let me, on my master envelope, I'm going to pull up the attack time a bit, make it a little softer, pull the release out a bit, make it a little softer. Maybe add a touch of reverb to it as well. I'll use the uh, convolution reverb. And I'll load an impulse response. We'll go with large spaces, warped reverbs. We'll go with the one called black hole. Let's see what this sounds like. There we go. We got a, a really, really cool sort of morphing uh, pad. Now, so you might be thinking at this point, okay, well, that's pretty simple. You know, spectral resynthesis is pretty simple because we just import some samples, pick a preset, and you're done. Well, that's the easy way to do it. That's that that is one way to do it. Um, and you can get some cool sounds that way, and you can even layer it with our other our other sources. We've only used one of our sources so far, but believe it or not, there is, and as I showed showed you earlier. Under the edit window, there is an entire spectral editor, which allows you to take each one of these samples, view its spectral analysis, and completely cu uh, customize it. So one of the problems here, at least with the way I'm doing it right now, is I loaded in a bunch of samples um, across the whole keyboard. Um, that's going to be difficult, because if I customize the spectral uh, content of one sample, I'm going to have to go, go do that exact same thing to all the other ones to make it sort of match up. I don't want to deal with that. That's a way too much of a hassle. Um, so let's start a new instrument, and I'm just going to load in one sample, and we're just going to use that one sample across the whole keyboard. So I'm just going to click on Zone here. Uh, let's, in fact, let's use one of the uh, Alchemy built-in uh, library samples. Let's go to Keys, Acoustic Pianos, 
Let's use the Grand Pluck piano, and I'm just going to use the C1 sample. And we are going to attempt to take this C1 sample, which sounds like that, and make something that's a little bit more ambient out of it. All right, so let's uh, let's talk about using the uh, the spectral editor a bit. Um, left and right obviously equals time, as you can see when I play a key. The playhead goes left to right. Uh, up and down is your frequency, so um, the little the little uh, uh, lines and, and uh, energy that's in the high end is high more high frequencies. Things in the lower end are, are low frequencies. Um, and then the brighter that these bars are, the brighter the energy is, the louder the sound is. So you can kind of sort of see where the meaningful overtones uh, are, and you can see that there's more high end at the beginning and less high end uh, toward the end. Um, there's also two different views or resolutions. There's a, a linear view, which basically shows you frequency uh, sort of the way it really is with high frequencies way more spread out. Because um, keep in mind, you know, there's the same amount of uh, space musically, if we're talking about like an octave, this, the same amount of space musically between, say, 20 hertz and 40 hertz as there is between 10,000 hertz and 20,000 hertz. So even though there's a, a huge numerical difference in the upper octaves, uh, there's just there's more space up up there. So when you switch to linear view, it actually displays it that way. The vast majority of what you're seeing here is all high frequency content because it's so spread out. When you use the logarithmic view, it sort of compacts um, the high frequency down a bit and you can see the low end a little bit better. So we'll most likely be using the logarithmic view for, for most of this. All right, there's also three different um, tools. There's a lasso tool, there is a brush tool, and there is a, an eraser tool. Um, they work a lot like if we're just like playing around in paint or Photoshop. You can draw things in with the, uh, with the brush tool. You can undo over here. Um, you can erase things with the eraser tool, and all of this is all of these things are going to customize the the spectral content. So let's do something with the eraser tool here. We're going to choose the eraser tool. Um, for the eraser tool and the brush tool, you'll be able to choose the type of brush that you want over here. So I'm going to go with the blurred circle and increase the size a bit. And let's delete this little line that's up here, and let's just de decrease the high frequency content up here and sort of round it off a bit. So let's play that. Let's uh, do a couple other things. Let's draw in a few little things here. All right, see what that sounds like. So the uh, the basically the harmonic bands here are being pulled out and then coming back in slowly. So part of the problem with working in the uh, spectral editor is it really opens up uh, a Pandora's box of just unlimited possibilities. I mean, we can really do anything we want here, um, but is it really practical to do so? Not really. It's it's not very practical to sit here and uh, create a sound from scratch, which you can actually do. You can actually uh, hit clear and basically just start from scratch with the uh, the brush tool and draw in any sound you 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 like or any image you like and you'll get you know you'll get that sound you know you but it, it doesn't it's not always gonna sound good but it is kind of cool from say like a sound effects perspective if you're just trying to create uh, some custom sounds especially for like sci-fi or glitchy computer sounds things like that you can uh, create some pretty cool things so let's go back to um, that sample that we had before I'm gonna clear out the the instrument again add a new zone um, it was under keys acoustic pianos grand pluck and it was grand pluck uh, c1 instead of um, trying to directly edit the sample which is what we're doing under the draw mode. Let's try to mask and unmask um, the spectral content with the mask mode. So what the masking mode does is instead of directly drawing on the signal, 
what you can do is you can use the brush tool to unmask the signal. So for instance, let me choose the brush tool, and this time I'm going to use the, um, the vertical line tool. I'm going to pull up the size of the vertical line, and I'm going to play in or draw in a few of these vertical lines. And by the way, you can click and drag as well. So if I want to pull out a long stretch of content, you can actually do that. Just like so. Let's see what that sounds like. So we're just hearing the, um, the sample where we're showing it. Likewise, if I use the eraser tool, uh, we can take any of those shapes and we can remask it and so we're not hearing it anymore. Um, so let's try, let's try another one. Let's try the uh, transient option. The transient's got a little, a little bit more, almost like a sort of like a drum hit to it. So let's sort of unmask the front end here. So that's kind of cool. Let's play with the size a bit and we'll unmask a few other spots, high and low. And let's maybe unmask a lot of the bottom here. Now you can use the lasso tool for this. Um, you can actually drag over a selection. With the lasso tool, it will unmask that area. Uh, or you can just do it with like your regular brush tool and like the circle. Um, increase the size of the circle and just sort of draw it in like a paint uh, like a paintbrush. So I'll try that. Let me try the blurred circle. Use it a little bit smaller here. Create a few little blips on here. Really what I'm going for is I don't want this to sound sort of choppy and glitchy like it is now. I want this to sound more like a, I don't know, just sort of like a blurry sort of ambient sort of texture is what I'm going for. Um, so I'm just gonna sort of at random mask and unmask things. Let's try the uh, horizontal line. Just put, try putting a few horizontal lines in there. Really, I'm I'm remasking the horizontal lines. So what I'll do is I will add a few more uh, vertical lines, some transients in, and uh, I'll do that off screen, and I'll be right back. All right, I'm back. Really, no rhyme or reason here. Just drawing in things at random. Uh, I'm also going to create a loop range so I can loop this. Um, and I'm going to create a back and forth loop range. So let's see what this sounds like. I tell you what, let's pull the loop range more up here because there's a bit more content up here. We'll pull the endpoint up as well. Let's try that. Cool. So it still doesn't sound that great. I want this to sound like, I don't know, I want to sound a little bit more ambient, something I can play with on the keyboard. Maybe if something is like a soundscape in the background, a, a drone tone. Um, maybe a drone tone for a film or something like that, horror film, whatever, suspense film. Um, let's add some reverb on the main effects bus. Let's just go with the convolution reverb. And I'm going to load an IR here, L uh, large spaces, warp reverb. I'm use the black hole again. And let's see what this sounds like. <laughs> So that's kind of cool. It's a little bright for my taste, so I'm going to go ahead and pull the, uh, the bandpass filter down a bit. There you go. 
I want the high end just to be a little bit more uh, filtered out. And then we can also try uh, one of the uh, resynthesis presets too. Let's try the blur option. We'll just barely put it in the mix. We won't even put it all the way in the mix. We'll do like 37% in the mix. So let's see how well this plays as like a like a chordal instrument. I'm gonna play some chords with it. What I am gonna do is I'm going to pull up the release time on my master volume quite a bit. Just so it rings out a little bit more. That's not too bad. Uh, let me pull up the number of voices. We only have eight voices right now. There we go. Let's try to layer this with something. I'm going to import just a VA. Um, let me use the drive edge. I like that one. I'm going to turn on a low pass filter, scoop out some of the high end. I'm going to modulate the volume with the sequencer. Create sort of like a rhythmic idea here. Also modulate the pan on that as well with an LFO. We'll make the LFO real slow though, like every set seven beats. Let's make it maybe make it a little bit more erratic. And we'll pull that down. Alright, let's see what that sounds like with those same chords that I had earlier. Hang on. The pops are coming from the simple fact that I'm, um, I've got the quality all the way up and I'm trying to do a, um, a screen capture at the same time. It's, my processor's not, not able to keep up very well, so I'm going to put this on 16 voices, put the quality on good for just a moment. Cool. So that's a really cool soundscape um, that we can use chordally, um, would fit in a song. It's not just something that has to be a drone tone or a sound effect. All right. So that's it for this video. Uh, in the next part of the Alchemy series, I'm going to show you guys how to create soundscapes and sound effects using the Spectral Engine. It's really, really cool, and you can really do some really awesome things with it that we haven't even talked about yet. It was just, we just don't have enough time to put all that in this video. So I'll do that in the next part of the series. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Please uh, leave me a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. And if, if you'd really, really like to support the channel and, and also help get our live tutorials up and running, please go to patreon.com com forward slash music tech help guy and make a contribution. Thank you for the support and thanks for watching.